day, combining with really, really eliminating your, your carbohydrates, even if it's just for a, br a very brief period of time. Okay, supplements for Lisa, we got, and then we got to fly to break. Things like zinc, for example, saw palmetto, things that might help with the testosterone. It could help with that, but I would go more for the insulin balancing as well. Okay. So think about C conjugated linoleic acid, think okay. about really high doses of chromium if you have a lot of sugar cravings. Um, monitor your blood sugars closely so that they don't drop too low. Um, Fish oils. Uh, I brought a special type of fish oil, this one here, which is specifically okay. for inflammation. And you know, so we'll talk about that one because that's a, you know indicated for so many people yeah. right after the break. It is time for another break. And up next, we'll tell you the best time to work out, the best types of exercise, and the intensity needed to balance your hormones and achieve the best weight loss outcome. That's when we're returning. Well, we've all heard it a million times, and. One claim of the best way to exercise beyond others, you know, it's just endless what's out there, from the late night infomercial to the 500 page best selling book, all promising immediate results. If you only had a degree in physiology. But the fact is, all of this doesn't matter if your hormones are not balanced. It's what we've been talking about today. You can calorie cut your diet and exercise all you like, but you'll never drop noticeable weight if your hormones are out of whack. And here to explain why is naturopathic doctor Natasha Turner, author of The Hormone Diet. Why? Why won't we lose weight if our hormones are not in balance, whether we're exercising or not? Well, unfortunately, you're, again, we have to go back to the philosophy that your hormones are dictating your ability to lose weight. It's not your exercise alone. It's not your diet alone. Right. And so if you have hormonal imbalance and you choose the wrong type of exercise, it'll perpetuate the problem. So, What's the right type of exercise? Okay, so the hormone diet is based on you have three half-hour uh, strength training sessions a week. Okay. And I give you very specific rules on how to do this. It's very short, it's high intensity, and you try and activate as many muscle groups as possible. When you do that, you lower stress hormone, you increase testosterone, which builds your muscle, builds your bone density, improves your energy, uh, improves your motivation, and you actually prevent um, the increase in stress that happens when so many of us tend to choose the wrong type of exercise, like too much cardio. Right, And right. the hormone diet is actually only one day of cardio a week. And okay. it's very hard for people to understand that, but I want you to do it for your heart health. But when you do the strength training program in the book, it's in the circuit, you actually increase your cardiovascular activity at the same time that you're building strength so it's super effective it's very basic and all the pictures are, are in the book and so it's men, an easy guide to follow absolutely. so all that's going to balance our hormones so also going to get sleeping better right that's right to balance your hormones uh, as well that way best time of day in mm -hmm. your opinion as the studies mm -hmm. show to exercise I think it's you want to think about the type of exercise you're doing really a lot of people will say it's most important that you get the exercise done, right. so just try and do it whenever right. you can. But if you're going to do cardiovascular exercise, I want you to do it in the morning. Okay. It helps to lower cortisol, which is reduces stress, and it increases your energy, and it increases your thyroid hormone, which is your master of your metabolic rate, throughout get the whole day. Get all that going, right? That's right. And cortisol's naturally higher in the morning anyway. That's right. right. That allows us to get up, you feel energized. And, right. and just in the same point, if your cortisol is too low, you wake up feeling lethargic, depressed, and low. So sure. again, you don't want it too low, you want it to be balanced. Um, think about your strength training in the evening is a nice time to do the strength training because you actually can go to bed soon after and then you in get the release of growth hormone. And that's going to be a natural way that your body responds more that's effectively, right. growing the, the, the muscles quicker and then therefore increasing your metabolism. Am I wrong? That's right. And awesome. building muscle tissue, repairing your skin cells, your muscle cells, your bone cells while you're sleeping. Good stuff. On to the phone lines again. Denise is calling in from Oshawa. Hi, Denise. Hi, how Good are evening. you? I'm excellent. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. Good. I'm phoning about my uh, daughter who's 22 and she's suffered from skin problems now for ever since she's actually been 12 and she has actually stopped all dairy thinking that that might help and it, it has cured up her skin a bit. She's completely vegetarian because she's afraid of the st steroids and meats and that Okay. Mm -hmm. because of her skin and um, but she still breaks out and the other thing is she's um, stressed a lot and has difficulty sleeping. Okay, where does she break out? Uh, on her face. On her face. Yeah. Primary, any one particular region, forehead, Cheeks. chin? Cheeks. Okay. Yeah. So so she's, uh, Denise's daughter's dairy free. Mm -hmm. It's been happening since she's 12. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, you know, we'll ask when she started her uh, menstrual cycle. Right. What are some tips though? Stress is high. And Stress is high. So obviously your skin cells repair when you sleep. So it's very important based on her age that she gets at least seven and a half to nine hours of sleep a night so that her skin can, can repair 
prepare. But think about your digestive function. Is she going to the washroom every single day? It's very, very important to have regular bowel movements. And one of the simplest ways you can improve the appearance of your skin is to take a probiotic, a high potency probiotic. So something around 10 to 15 billion cells per capsule. Okay. And and then I mean I start the whole the whole program in the book with a detox yeah, I was diet. Ask you, detoxification. This sounds like it could it's help huge. her. It's huge. It'd be so it's important. And and yeah. we remove all the foods that could adversely affect her skin, um, cause bloating, swelling, wa water retention, as well as digestive upset. And, and so help the body purge a lot of those chemicals, right. the phthalates we're talking about, all those things we're exposed right. to on a daily basis. Just get the body working better mm -hmm. on its own. So perhaps Denise, you might want to advise uh, your daughter to start that way mm -hmm. with a detoxification. Get the sleep. That's right. And and that's what the program starts with. You, I teach right. you how to sleep, and I teach you the foods you need to take out of your diet for two just two weeks. You don't have to count your calories at all. Um, I just want you to take out the foods that we know upset your hormone. And one of the benefits is, is that people say they have amazing looking skin. Right. Well, skin so. outbreaks certainly leading into the you know age 22, starting Absolutely. at 12. Sounds like there likely could be a, a hormone issue there. Mm -hmm. Let's get to a, an email from Linda, who's asking. She's got two quick questions, but because you were talking about stress, uh, her first question here is whether chronic stress will cause a hormone imbalance that will throw your metabolism out of whack. I mean, that seems to be some rhetoric we're describing today, right? It is absolutely probably sure. the number one cause of hormonal imbalance. Yep. It's, it's stress. Okay. So um, I teach you how to recognize stress because many of us have absolutely no idea that we are stressed. Uh, so the particular signs and symptoms. And then what you can do, I, I teach you how to eat, how to sleep, how to exercise, and the right amount of sex, the right amount of skin care, all this stuff to help reduce the amount of stress on, on your body. So you actually should start thinking about your stress first. We know that stress drops your thyroid hormone. It actually right. decreases your metabolic rate. That's why it's so important to use the exercise philosophy that I'm talking about in the book because I don't uh, want you to over-exercise and to increase the stress in your metabolism. How many of us think, I'm going to go out, I'm going to start training for a marathon. The running might be good for... Too much of a good yeah, thing is not always not a good thing. Right? Less is more. Less is more often. It's time for our final break. When we come back, we'll be talking more, of, taking more of your questions rather on hormonal balance and weight loss as well as share with you my final recommendations. Don't turn the dial. Well, according to recent statistics, sleep deprivation affects more than 70 million North Americans. In fact, we're spending 24 billion a year just trying to fall asleep. But that's still only a fraction of the 100 billion we spend every year in our attempts to lose weight. Before going back to the phone lines, Dr. Natasha Turner uh, will tell us just how important sleep really is. Well, um, it's essential. And I actually tell patients, if you're not sleeping properly or enough, it's going to be almost impossible to lose weight or to keep it off. And we know that it increases your appetite. It decreases the hormones that burn fat. And we know that people that are sleep deprived have bigger waistlines. So that's why I start the whole program with teaching you how to sleep. You, most of us have no idea that f when we sleep properly, it's actually an amazing fat burning activity. Absolutely. Um, in fact, you know, in your book, you know, this is uh, one of the first things you talk about in terms of tips, getting a superb mm -hmm. sleep. The mm -hmm. hormone diet. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, you know, it, it really goes. Lots of natural sleep remedies as Absolutely. well, because the problem is, is a lot of us take sleep medications and you don't get the sleep that that you need. Excellent. Um, another email here, uh, which uh, uh, second part of the question actually I wanted to answer from Linda, um, asked whether or not a male uh, friend or or uh, partner possibly with enlarged breast tissue wonder whether or not this is a hormonal imbalance. I'd say yes it is and it's an indication that she, he probably has too much estrogen in his body and we know that this increases the risk of breast cancer in both men and women and it also increases the risk of prostate cancer in men so I actually formulated a detox product that's specifically for breaking down and eliminating estrogen and okay. it's for both men and women and uh, this is safe to take it doesn't interact with medications and um, it works amazingly well to help restore hormonal balance and you'd actually start to see the fat deposits decrease once that, that hormone balance gets restored. Very good. Well, let's go back to the phone lines. Irene. Irene's calling in from Toronto. Welcome to Wild on Health, Irene. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Thanks for waiting. No problem. So my question is regarding my uterine fibroid. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with uterine fibroid when I was 27. I'm now almost 31. I have one large fibroid that's about 12 centimeters. Since being diagnosed, I've changed my diet, eating mostly organic and almost becoming a vegetarian, and also stop using anything with paraben and plastic containers. Um, so, so far, my fiber has maintained its size. It hasn't really grown. I'm just wondering, given my age and the size of my fibroid, is there any hope that it can be treated? The first question I'd want to ask is, how big is the fibroid? It's 
I have three. The biggest one, which is the most concerning, is 12 centimeters, and it's pedunculated. Okay, so I think any fibroid larger than about 4 centimeters, it's going to be very difficult to shrink. Um, but it's what you want to think about yeah. is actually correcting the hormonal imbalance that's fueling the growth of the, of the fibroid. So just like the previous man that had the enlarged breast, you probably have too much estrogen in the body, and I would recommend that you start uh, doing a detoxification process to help eliminate the estrogen. And and maybe think about a natural progesterone cream, which can help to, ha to counteract. Like a bioidentical topical That's right. cream, right? I use that. It's so effective to help shrink the fibroids or maintain the size and actually help to regulate um, irregular bleeding that sometimes happens with the uterine fibroids. So think about cutting down estrogen and then adding progesterone. And you know, Irene, I, I, let's just clarify this and sort of debunk this for people, explain very quickly why. Detox, detox, detox sounds like new age vagary. Mm -hmm. It often does. You know, mm -hmm. What's happening when we detoxify, when we help the liver along? How is that? working to well, balance estrogen. There's actually metabolic pathways in the liver involved in breaking down and eliminating estrogen. And so you can give vitamins and supplements and nutrients to increase the activity of these of these pathways. Excellent. Example is magnesium is an incredible estrogen detoxifier, calcium deglucurate. And these are all the ingredients that I put in the pack. So it's yep. so simple. Good stuff. On to Dawn from Mississauga. Hi Dawn. Hi Dawn. You with us? On to Karen, who's also calling from Mississauga. Hi, Karen. Thanks for waiting. Hello. Hi, how are you this evening? I'm great, thank Good. you. I, wanna, Good. I would like to get back to the sleep issue. Sure. I was trying, I have been trying to lose weight for about a year and a half and haven't been able to. Okay. And I've been, I eat well, I exercise, I do weight training. And in April, I started, uh, I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. And I started with the CPAP machine, yep. and I was wondering how long it's going to take for the hormones to get in balance so that I can start actually losing weight. Yeah, great question, Karen. Thanks for that. Apnea is a huge concern. Right. Now we know, as you know, right. it's not just diet, exercise, hormones, mm -hmm. or even, you know, uh, the metabolic stuff. Sleep's key and, mm -hmm. and oxygenation, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how mm -hmm. what can we expect for Karen, even if she gets sleep uh, well, correctly? She actually might want to get some blood testing to look at her hormone levels and see how's your cortisol level, uh, how, how's your insulin levels, because we know that people that have sleep apnea have higher levels of cortisol, and they may have high insulin levels. So I suggest that you ask your, your doctor for those blood tests and find out where they are and if you're not living in a way every day that's exacerbating stress or raising cortisol like you're exercising properly you're trying to get the right amount of sleep um, maybe you'll if, it, if it's still high in the blood it might be a good indication that you might need to adjust your CPAP machine um, or adjust your, adjust your sleep habits any simple stuff to bring cortisol down quickly before going back to our next caller my, my favorite choice number yeah. one herb is yeah. Rolora. Rolora and Love it. amazing herb it works so well and people that have difficulty uh, with waking up throughout the night, it works amazing. Laura, good stuff. And maybe get your uh, hormones tested via urine or saliva, Karen, mm -hmm. as well. It's a little bit more accurate in some cases for uh, hormones versus blood. Maria, if you're still with us, uh, calling in from Toronto, we have uh, a minute left here to take your question, if you could be quick. Are you with us, Maria? Maria might have been uh, dropped there as well. So, you know what, let's just leave off with these tests because it's mm -hmm. so important for people to understand. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, certain tests that the doctors are not looking at that mm -hmm. are often missed mm -hmm. or, or, or uh, you know, specific types of tests and the method in which they are looked at just quickly before we have to leave today? Um, I actually put a whole chapter on testing because I think it's so important and it's so empowering if you know the tests to ask for. So, um, it's a big topic and I think the easiest thing to do is to, is to look at the reference that I put in the, in the appendix of the book and, and it outlines all the hormones that you can test and the perfect range for every hormone and actually what you can do to restore balance for that particular imbalance. So Excellent. So a lot of people, just quickly, a lot of people are having you know, with hypothyroidism. We've mentioned right. cortisol being high, what they can right. do, Relora, but quickly in, in, in 10 seconds or less, hypothyroidism, like low-acting thyroid, any simple natural medicines. L-tyrosine. Okay. Probably the simplest thing that you could do is pick up a supplement of L-tyrosine. Don't take this if you have high blood pressure. Take two pills first thing in the morning. And, and just understand that if you've been dieting and exercising and you're not getting the results that you want, it's not necessarily your fault. Good stuff. Thanks so much for joining us again. Dr. Natasha Turner, The Hormone Diet. You can pick it up anywhere, uh, local Indigo mm -hmm. chapters, Amazon.com. Uh, Amazon Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. My final recommendations. Well, if hormones are in balance, there's a potential to age gracefully and remain youthful. I recommend 
urinary and or salivary hormone profile as just discussed that for women should be collected throughout the entire month. You can get more information from a laboratory called Genova Diagnostics at gdx.net. And if you're suspicious about a chemical toxin in your body causing a hormone disturbance, you can learn more by having yourself tested for those things as well with a laboratory called Metamatrix. And they're online as well for more information at metamatrix.com. Lastly, Dr. Turner's offered very graciously uh, some of her favorite hormonal balancing recipes from her book, and you can find those free of charge, of course, online on our website, cp24.com. For more of today's show or to watch previous episodes of Wild on Health and to review today's or my previous recommendations to these episodes, go to cp24.